Hey guys, it's Lauren here with Nat20AU and today I wanted to show you guys how to play Brew. Now Brew is the newest game from Pandasaurus Games who sent me an advanced copy in exchange for a review and I decided to do a quick how to play because this game is just really fun. Brew will be releasing on June 16th though they are expecting some shipping delays so it may be later in June or early July and pre-orders come with a free companion creature mini expansion so I'll pop all those details down below. So Brew is what I would call a really fun family friendly game and the idea is that the world is frozen in time, the village bends to the will of the forest and swaps between day and night frequently which you can see here with the board. The seasons all happen at once and the world is in absolute chaos and using your abilities you're tasked with bringing some stability back into the world and to do this you're going to control forests, brew potions and tame various creatures along your way. At the beginning of the round, all players will roll their dice, and on your turn, you must play one dice. It is mandatory to place one dice and allocate it out. So you want to try and match these dice with the correct symbols on the board to gain the most out of your actions. If you look at the bottom of the village board, you can see that some spaces here will require specific dice to be interacted at with, while the top two can be visited by any dice and multiple people can visit these spaces. In the forest, each spot can only hold one die, but there are some fun and interesting exceptions to this rule, which I'll explain shortly. Because I'm playing with Ren, who is my favourite character so far, her special ability lets me train four animals at any given time, utilising their abilities, unlike the others who can only have three animals. She can also spend one of these wild herbs to treat any resource space as a train animal space. She doesn't gain the resources in doing so, but it's a very special ability that means she can almost always train an animal. So knowing what I know about Ren, I definitely want to be training an animal this turn. So I'm going to put my die up here on this space, which will allow me to train an animal. And I'm going to train this little dude who has a really cool ability that lets me gain 2 VP anytime I can claim control of an autumn forest. So that's a really good card to start my game with. And that's the only action I have to do on my turn. Optionally, I can brew or drink a potion, which I won't do because I just don't have enough resources this turn, but it is an option for me on every turn. Now, brewing and drinking potions is a really cool part of this game, and the way it works is if I brew, I pay the resources, and that potion comes into my hand. Now, I don't have to share the information about what potions I have in my hand, um, but we did play like that, and we just put them down to the bottom of our character. Now there's a spot on the board that lets you reserve a potion and what this means is you can take any potion without paying its resources but you don't get to put that card in your hand. It just sits to the side until you pay the resources so you will not get the points for this at the end of the game. But it just lets you hold on to the fun stuff like that one which is um, remove any place die on the board. It could be really really beneficial. So I've set up my second player here and his special ability lets him play a wild herb to place a die on top of another die, essentially negating that die and potentially taking control of a forest, which is a really cool ability and it really lets you sway the control of the forest if you really need to. So what he's going to do is place a water die on his turn. Now each elemental die has a special ability when placed in the forest and water in particular can be very very strong and it will gain three resources from the corresponding spot meaning if you put it here you'll gain three mushrooms instead of one which your forage die would gain you. Now with the other end elemental die, fire can sit on top of other people's dice and burn their control out, meaning you will negate their control of the forest potentially. And wind can sit on top of your own die and return that to you to give you another chance to place it later on, which is really, really beneficial if you've been pushed out of a forest. Placing elemental dice in the forest, however, means no one is in control of that forest space at the moment. Once these dice leave your hand, they no longer belong to you. They act as an additional player and essentially negate control. Because I'm playing with Ren, I really want to be focusing on animals and taming, but that also means I need to be grabbing as many forests as I can. Training animals mean they actively sit on the left side of my player board. Their abilities are currently active. Once I have more than my limit of four, in Ren's case, I can release them onto the right side of my board, meaning their abilities just aren't active anymore. These animals are worth one point once scored, however if I release an animal into the matching forest, that animal flips over and is then worth three points instead of one. Now I want to tell you a little bit more about the day side board abilities. At the top left you can gather one of every resource, on the top right you can train a creature. The middle here for a fire die is remove all elemental dice from a forest. Bottom left is your wind die where it lets you gain an herb and reserve a potion. And the bottom right is a water which gives you one of each resource that's not a wild.
jumping ahead a little bit, at the end of the round, we've all placed all of our dice. We have some potions, some animals, some resources. But because we have no dice left, we're going to have to resolve those forests to continue. As you can see, the forest on the far left is completely controlled by elemental dice, so nobody claims this forest. The forest in the middle is claimed by me, and the forest on the right is claimed by my opponent with his two dice, meaning we each receive something. In round two, each player will roll their dice, forest cards have been reset, and the only thing left to do is flip our village board to the night side. Round to round, you're going to be swapping from day to night, and that changes the abilities on the board quite drastically. The open spaces at the top are now gather one of any resource in the top left, reveal and reserve one potion in the top right. The elemental spaces are wind, allowing you to gather and train one creature in the bottom left. Fire lets you scorch all empty spaces in a forest, and water lets you trade one to three resources for wild herbs. These are all really good abilities. So I haven't mentioned scorching yet, and some animals and abilities will allow you to scorch spaces when you put a die out. Now what you do to scorch is take one of these little fire spaces and you just place it on an empty space, essentially locking that space. So this middle action in the village board is actually really, really powerful because what it does is it can let me scorch and lock all the spaces in a forest after I have one or two dice there. Now the downside to that is if I do it with one or two dice, people can still hit me with their fire dice and that can still negate my ability to hold on to that forest. But it is a really cool action and is a good way to either secure spots for yourself or mess with your opponents. Now, scorching is something we used a lot, and some animal abilities even let you scorch. For example, this one my opponent has lets me scorch any empty forest space when I place my die in a winter forest. Placing a die in this half winter, half summer forest here at the top, where I have already placed my die, can be really, really powerful because now I can put another scorch anywhere on the board. Now, I want to talk about the player aids in Brew for a second. I love a good player aid, and Brew has some really good ones. Unfortunately, there are only four on the board, and they're double sided so it can be a little annoying to flip between them but they are really really good turns are broken down really well it starts with all players rolling their dice together on your turn you will place one die which is mandatory you may brew one potion and or drink a potion at the end of the round you will claim all controlled forests use end of round creature abilities which i did have some of in this game check for a game end which is just exhausting the forest deck and then you set up the next round take back all of your dice Flip the village board, reveal new forests, and move the first player marker to the next player. The other side of the player aid breaks down the elemental powers really well. Fire on top of any dice to negate control. Water gives you plus two of the resource on the space you go to, giving you a total of three. Wind lets you take your die back and place that at a later turn. Something mentioned on the bottom of the card, which we really didn't play with the first time because we didn't quite notice, is that you can force a forage die, which is one of your colored die, onto any spot in the forest. Now to do this, you need to pay the resource that's indicated rather than getting the resource or pay a wild herb to stay there. This will be really important in swaying control of the forest as you will find yourself in a position where you can't match your die to certain spaces to gain anything, so gaining that extra control over a forest will be really beneficial. And that's how to play Brew. Remember, this game comes out on June 16th, and check below for all of the details about pre-ordering. If you guys have any questions about the game, you guys can check out my review on my Instagram and at 20AU, or feel free to comment and message me and let me know if you have anything you wanted me to address. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you already haven't.